Ridley did with Alien 1, and Fede made a point in not green-screening it. As a fan of the franchise, I knew it needed to be gritty and grounded. So we built every creature for real. This film brings all of the things that we love from this franchise, so you know it's going to be properly scary. If you don't stay quiet, we will die. It is about time we got to this point. I've been wanting to review Alien Romulus all year. So I wanted to do something a little different. Today I want to do a spoiler free and a spoiler review all in one video. And then I will give a spoiler warning when I jump into those. I do got to start the video off by showing the popcorn bucket that I got. I got the Cinemark one, which is this guy here. It's very detailed. I like the look of it. It's pretty sleek. It looks grotesque and gross. It's got a handle here to hold on to it. It doesn't fit very much popcorn. It's quite small inside. But yeah, there's not much to this thing. It's more of a prop to me than I'm going to display in my place next to my other alien stuff. But I do think this is the better one. Didn't care for the Regal one too much, but I picked this guy up. When I saw the movie, I realized I'm only going to eat out of this thing one time because it's hard to clean and it doesn't fit very much popcorn in there. And it's not worth spending $10 to fill this thing up. So yeah, if you're trying to grab one of these, I'm sure all the scalpers have them by now. And you're going to have no luck grabbing one because of all the awesome scalpers that have them. And they're probably asking for two, $300 for these things. This thing was only $25. If you can find one, I got this at Cinemark. Now I wasn't disappointed with this movie, but would a non-alien fan enjoy this? I think so, to a degree. I think some people are gonna find it a bit boring. The lore parts of the story are gonna confuse them and they're just not gonna pay attention or care. They're gonna be more interested in what happens later on with the facehuckers and the xenomorphs. It's scary and suspenseful, but it's not terrifying where you're gonna be, oh. I would say it's more stressful and tense than it is terrifying. There is good action towards the end. The third act is crazy crazy good the general audience is going to enjoy the third act the most the movie's not boring the trailers are manipulative what you see in the trailers is what you get i do however have to say the trailers reveal a lot too much in my opinion granted like every movie it takes about 40 minutes to get to that point but once it gets there it doesn't let up and it's constant Xenomorph action. I don't think a lot of people are going to like the characters. There's very unlikable characters in the movie. There's no one to root for and that's a complaint I'll get into later. You don't really feel anything for them. They're just there to be killed and quite frankly they're annoying and obnoxious and you want them to die. The uh, British guy with the super thick accent, he's the most obnoxious character and he's the biggest prick in the movie. And most people are going to be voting for him to die first. There is good suspense. If you don't know the background of the movie, there's a lot of good practical effects. And that stuff looks amazing. Absolutely phenomenal. You can't argue that practical effects don't look better than CGI or digital effects. They just don't hold up as well. If you're kind of a fan of that, you're sick and tired of the cotton candy Transformers Marvel stuff that looks very artificial and terrible. This will make you very happy. So if all you're looking for is xenomorph action, suspenseful moments, practical effects, and something that's got good pacing to it that isn't boring and it's not overly complicated story-wise, this is for you. So if you want to see this movie and you're wondering if it's good, I recommend seeing it in theaters so you can get the good sound work and the Thomas sound, Dolby Digital, whatever your theater uses. It's worth theater admission. It's not something you would probably want to watch at home I do recommend it in that we are about to jump into spoilers Welcome to the spoiler section guys. So I want to start off by saying that I think Fede Alvarez did a fantastic job with this movie. I loved his hyper fascination and dedication to doing all practical effects. Like 
like if you see some of this stuff right here, look at this. This is a full size alien xenomorph animatronic robot that they handmade. You know, you got all these other practical effects and like the sets here are on a grand scale. If you look at these things, it's phenomenal what they can do with a movie. You know, this is just entertainment and it looks so real. And I love that people can come together and do these things. I've said that before, but if you just look at this set right here, it's absolutely out of this world. It feels like the world we're supposed to be in. I almost loved everything about the movie, but I do have some complaints I'm going to get into, but I want to compliment the movie on its practical effects. The sound work in this was immersive. You are terrified by some of the noise you hear and the way they draw out some noises and let you sit in them for a minute where it's just dead quiet or there's creaking somewhere instead of having a bunch of dialogue just vomited in your face. And I love those quieter moments because it just raises your anxiety and it makes you start questioning if something's coming. And if there are noises of creatures coming, it brings up the thrill of it because you hear them, but there's nothing else besides their sounds. The team that made this movie, you guys all did a phenomenal job. I'm very happy with how this thing turned out. I am definitely picking this up on 4K day one when it comes out. Now I did drop my grade. I'd like to explain why. Because I've seen this movie twice now and I do plan on seeing it a third time. I, I know, it's... I should calm down, but... I had to wait seven years for a new Alien movie, so I'm going to see as many times as I want. It's not like football where I get to have a new Alien movie every single year. You know, it ain't sports where you get it all year round. I mentioned this in my review part, but I do have to say the characters are very unlikable. I wasn't necessarily going in this expecting deep connections with characters or having long character development, but I did want to like the characters and root for someone a little more. But everyone is just boring, annoying, especially the guy with the British accent. Shot me in the water and shot your shot shot in there, you see? His accent was way too thick. I have seen this twice now, and even on my second viewing, I tried to pick up on more of what he said. I maybe went from understanding 35% of what he said to 40%. I don't know why someone didn't say something to him or they tried to work something out. And then you had the other guy who had a very thick accent. He's like, you gotta open the door right now, you gotta open it. You understood him more, but he was still, you know, somewhat difficult to understand. I just, get rid of the accents. Now, some people were confused, and this is a question I had because I didn't pick up on it as well the first viewing. The Xenomorph that Ripley shot off of the Nostromo in the escape pod, they found that alien in a rock, right? They found that alien in the rock, and then it got on the ship and started causing havoc and killing everyone. Can the Xenomorphs cocoon themselves? Like, how did it get in this asteroid rock? That's something I didn't understand. Why did the characters not just fly off the planet? They have a ship. Just get off the planet if they don't want to do the coal mine work. Weyland Yutani is basically doing slave labor there. After seeing it a second time, I put it two and two together and I realized Weyland Yutani knows nobody has access to cryopods for long trips, so there's no escape off the planet they are currently on, which is Jash and Star. And that's why they're stuck there. A complaint that I have that I think is valid, I wish they would have went a little different direction with the main storyline and the plot here. Here we have some young teenagers and they're the first to find the Renaissance station, but Weyland Yutani didn't have the technology to find this ship. It would have been better if the script had them either find it first because it just went down or two, they sent the younger people there to check it out and see what's up in the ship or possibly have a mission for them to go recover the black ooze in exchange for travel permits to another planet. It's just hard because it's right above Jackson Star and no one notices but they did first. Another question I had was when Andy found the blue light towards the third act, he was very interested in its presence and he either kneeled down to like feel it, either analyze it with his computer or sensory on his fingers. So why was he so interested in it and why they make such a big deal out of it? Because they do show the light pretty clearly. I know it was a throwback to the old Alien movie, but other than that, I don't know what its purpose was or why Andy was interested in it. Now, this isn't necessarily my complaint. This didn't bother me too much, but it seems to have annoyed a lot of the Alien fans. We all know what part I'm talking about. Ian Holt Holmes makes a return as his character Ash, which is a synthetic from Alien, if you didn't know that. And it looked terrible. 
the CGI on its face and the mapping of how it looked did not look or feel authentic at all. It was very artificial. But Fede Alvarez was very adamant about doing all practical effects. Obviously there are a couple shots in the film that are not practical. And then all of a sudden we bring this in and it looks terrible. I give Fede Alvarez a pass because I think that was a studio note and he was forced to have it in there. And I also think it's kind of shady and really messed up to bring a dead actor back who's been dead for four years now that had no involvement in the movie. Now had he been working on the movie and he just didn't film a couple of his parts, I'd be okay with it. Kind of like what they did with Paul Walker in Fast and the Furious. He had filmed a whole bunch of scenes but he only filmed half and they had to animate his face on another actor for the remainder of the other half of the movie. I'm okay with that because the actors already started that production and he wasn't able to complete it so out of respect for him they finish it for him and they keep him in the film. Ian Holmes has been dead for four years. He died in 2020 and they just brought him back literally for no reason other than nostalgia. You could have easily brought in another actor to play that role. There's hundreds of thousands of actors out of work that could have played that part and they would have done it better because they could have been in makeup and it probably would have cost less. But the studio forced him to put it in there and I know that's what happened. <laughs> so my biggest complaint about this movie and I think it's a big plot hole. This is a big reason why my grade went down a little bit. It made no sense that this group of people get on the Renaissance station and they start setting off all these alarms, making all this noise and screaming, but it doesn't alert the xenomorphs. Even in Aliens, the minute the, the Colonel Marines, once they arrive there and the aliens know they're there, they just start pouring in to attack. And they weren't even making as much noise either. But these people come on the ship, they start using the systems, it starts setting off alarms and the doors are loud and they're screaming. I just didn't understand how it didn't alert the Xenomorphs. And I wish they would have structured that a little better. The Xenomorphs weren't around maybe at that time or they were sleeping. Show me something. They don't even really attack until they go down there. You know, the ship that they've taken over, that they, they're protecting, because the aliens are like bees. They make a hive, they bring hosts to the facehuggers, the facehuggers come out of the egg, get onto the person, they pop an embryo out of their chest. Uh, and before someone corrects me, I know they're ovomorphs, the eggs. I'm just saying eggs for people who don't know what they are. And something that I want to mention that people were complaining about was saying it wasn't original, that it was just alien and aliens glued together. And I just don't necessarily find that 100% true. I think it stayed faithful to the look and aesthetic of how everything looked in those movies, but it had its own purpose and plot. Granted, I thought it could have been a little stronger. It's not unoriginal because it's the third act. They mentioned the black goo in that and how they were experimenting on creatures and there's more exposition. Like now I know that the xenomorphs, they don't eat. They kind of just go into hibernation. That was explained. And then they had the scene that was really cool with the acid where she shot all the xenomorphs with the new pulse rifle, which is also new and then the zero gravity stops and they go up in the air and then she has to glide through the acid and not get killed that was different and original so i don't know why people were saying this movie had nothing new to it and you had that creepy giant creature at the end which was also new both times i've seen the movie the crowds i were with people were like oh and I love what they did with the makeup. I loved every second of that scene. It was really good. Short-lived, but it was towards the end. This is more of a nitpick, but a big thing that I was very disappointed was, Fetty Alpharis, why did you get rid of your money shot, man? This shot in the trailer right here. They didn't have that shot in there. It was a different take. Like the creature didn't get in her face and the other mouth, big mouth open and the little mouth came out. They got rid of that shot and I don't know why. Because I'm sure it took a lot of preparation to get that angle. Also, there was the nostalgia thing towards the end where Andy the robot saves the lead character, shoots the xenomorph and says, get away from her, you bitch. He should have just said, get away from her. Because that's Ripley's line. I don't want them taking her thunder. That's her line. I don't think it was needed, but that was more just, I guess, an Easter egg and a wink. And I do wish it wasn't there, but it doesn't like bother me where I'm like, this movie sucks because this is in there. I just wouldn't have used it. 
The final shot was really good when she opens the shaft and it pulls this gigantic tall seven foot eight foot creature out into space and she's holding on to the rope. They have this landscape shot of the planet that they're over and showing the ship explode. It was one of the best shots in the movie and I really liked it a lot. <laughs> Now, one thing I was super grateful for was the robot he was off and he was kind of like awkward and weird. Man, I hope he doesn't act like this the whole time, you know, telling dad jokes and stuff. I'm really glad that they had switched chips and they got the Weyland Yutani prime directive, what's best for the company chip put in him because he got more serious. Towards the end, his old module goes back in and then he goes back to himself, but the movie is basically over, so it didn't bother me too much. Don't listen to the people that's saying it's the most terrifying thing that's ever been made. That's not true. It's got some terrifying moments like with the eight foot creature in the end and it's got suspenseful moments that are going to stress you out. This is another reason why my grade went down a little bit was like the scene where they go into the room and it's got all the face huggers. I like that they explain that these things are heat sensitive because I thought they were just sensitive to movement and noise. So I liked that lore and I did like that scene. I thought it was very suspenseful, but it was very short lived. There were a lot of scenes like that that were really suspenseful and they were kind of the edge of your seat moments where you could have really raised my anxiety and kept holding it until I was just like, oh my God, but they let go too soon for me. So when there's that scene happening, character sister calls and he starts getting on the radio and he's like, where are you? And I just don't think the characters were smart in this movie. But someone wouldn't do that in that situation. They would shut it off you know because these things are all around them but he just answers it and then they are on a like a 15 second chase and then it's over that and with the the xenomorph stuff not hearing them and the bad cg on the robot that's kind of a reason why my grade went down a little bit in this but i still really enjoyed the movie very much and in that i want to recommend anyone who hasn't seen it to go see it it's worth price of admission i think you'll have a great time with it everything's going to look really good except for that synthetic robot it's exciting movie and i think you'll enjoy it very much I'm going to grade Alien Romulus a B plus. <laughs>and I do want to tell you that the next one I have is from my last movie loot box winner, The Nightmare Nerd, and I'm going to be reviewing Faces. Well, that does it for my Alien Romulus review, guys. I really love this movie, and I'm so glad I finally got to see it, and I'm planning on seeing it again, and I will be picking it up on 4K, and I think you should go see it. I highly recommend it. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. It really helps out with the channel, and I will catch you movie fans on my next review.